familiar. It's the Parisian Metro Gate. But wait, we're not in Paris. We're in Washington, D.C. Why is it that there is a Parisian Metro Gate in Washington, D.C.? This actually is not a real Metro Gate. It's a sculpture called the entrance to the Metropolitan. It was offered by Paris to Washington. It's um, a symbol of the French culture. Oh, really? Is there any more Parisian landmarks in D.C. to confuse tourists like me? No, not that I can think of. However, the French presence is um, noticeable all throughout the city. Uh, from uh, Charles Enfant Grave to the Rochambeau Statue. Um, you can find symbols of the French heritage all over DC. It's really interesting. Nice! So since the 18th century, our two countries have developed a very special bond. And Washington DC is one of those cities where you can actually study that special bond between our two countries. I'm standing here at the grave of Pierre L'Enfant, who actually designed the plan for the city of Washington. Uh, behind me, you can also see the city of Washington, and from that you see the radiating avenues that come out from the Capitol building, the White House, uh, which Pierre L'Enfant actually placed on these maps. Uh, Pierre L'Enfant actually lost his commission uh, several years later, and uh, he actually died in poverty. But uh, with the resurgence of the L'Enfant plan under the Macmillan Commission, he was relocated here in 1909 to this place of prominence outside of Arlington House. The park across from the White House is named in honor of Marquis de Lafayette, the French Major General who served in the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War and befriended George Washington. A statue of the General Comte de Rochambeau also stands in the Lafayette Park since 1902. Comte de Rochambeau was the commander-in-chief of the French expeditionary force that fought alongside with George Washington and the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. The portrait of the Marquis de Lafayette that's in the House of Representatives chamber is one of the very first pieces of art that ever came into the Congress. And it was a gift by the artist Ari Scheffer, who was a French artist born in the Netherlands. The portrait of the Marquis de Lafayette that hangs in the House chamber has been hanging with Lafayette's great friend George Washington since the 1830s when the Congress, seeing that it had this wonderful portrait of a great French hero of the American Revolution, wanted to have Lafayette's great friend, Washington, to hang with him. So they commissioned a portrait to, to be a companion to this French gift to the nation. Held Lafayette was the first foreign dignitary to address the House and the Senate. It's interesting because at that point even American politicians and dignitaries didn't come to address Congress. And so to have Lafayette come speak before Congress was a really unique event. The tradition of foreign dignitaries coming to address Congress uh, followed really in the wake of, of uh, Lafayette's uh, example. Uh, more than 160 individuals have addressed the House and this includes French individuals and dignitaries I believe nine of them up to this point, and the latest would be Nicolas Sarkozy. On behalf of the French people, long live the United States of America, long live France, long live French-American friendship. U.S.-French relationship is at the very foundations of our republic. The French were there uh, in our war of revolution. Uh, the, the French have been our friends. I, I've often said uh, in French, uh, les Français sont des amis de mauvais temps. Uh, quand il fait mauvais, ils sont là pour vous. The French are bad weather friends. When it's bad weather, they're there to help you. And we wanted to get that message across to the uh, American public. We said, I think the best way to do this is to create a friendship caucus, a parliamentary friendship caucus. It was a bipartisan I had friends on the Republican side, friends on the Democratic side, as did Congressman Houghton, and together we work to explain to our colleagues the importance of this transatlantic relationship between the United States and France, and, and to show also that the relationship is cultural, it's military, it's historical, it's economic. 